What's up guys? Just got back from the car test to make sure this slapped. If you clicked on this video, you and I both already know why you're here. One of the greatest guitarists ever, Jason Richardson, just always seems to have some of the punchiest and hard hitting mixes moving the genre forward. And a bunch of this is thanks to Taylor Larson, who is one of the best mixers that came along in the last decade. By the end of this video, you'll not only have an understanding of what goes into making a Jason Richardson style track, but be walked through achieving the sounds for it as well. I'll also be throwing this song and session with the template in the description below so you can mess with it on your own time. It's currently only for Reaper, but you know, if you guys really want, I'll convert it. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST, but what some of you may not know is before I got here and even part of while I was here, I was doing the audio production for Gear Gods. This really gave me an appreciation for reviewing, demoing, etc. But long story short, this song was written by Trey Xavier and I mixed it. I'll show you a clip of that right now. Now approaching this was very different because it's a style pretty different to my own. Tons of orchestration, uh, extremely guitar centric since most of the tracks uh, Jason does don't have vocals on them. Well, let's approach this as if we were mixing any other song. Side note, I was mixing this on Discord and my friend who is a really amazing hip hop mixer thought he could make a fire mix with what I was sent. So I sent him the stems. He saw the drum and bass MIDI and said, where are the sounds and waves? I'm like, this is how people send us stuff to mix. Use your imagination. Needless to say, an hour later, he had a big appreciation for what all of us do. Number one, understanding the drum sound. When I think of Jason Richardson, I think of Taylor Larson's drum sound and Lou Collins playing. They're very impactful. The kick is more knock than thud, and there's a decent amount of room to the snare. We'll be working with MIDI drums through Drum Forge, and instead of having to dig too deep into sound selection, Luckily, Luke and Taylor have a drum shots pack out that loads directly into Drumforge. If you don't have Drumforge, you can still use this with something else. It's just integrated in a really nice way here. So let's take a listen to how this sounds with just throwing a preset on here. I'm using one called Guilty as Pleasure. Uh, I'm going to mute the drum shots while I do this. Not a bad starting point, but to get the impact and punch of a Taylor Larson mix, we're gonna have to punch up that kick and snare. Let's listen to a couple of options. Okay, let's check out the kick. Happy with my selection, same for the snare, let's check it out. Ringy was cool, but chose this one, let's play it. And make sure to pay attention to this gate over here. If you want those ghost notes to come through, um, you're going to pull it down here. If you don't really want them, then you're going to pull it up towards the top so that you're not engaging them. So now we have a nice punchy drum sound. To accompany this, we're going to have to move on to step two, a crushing bass tone. I know Taylor Larson likes to split bass and use a Sansam style plugin on the top and bottom, which I've never seen other people do. It's usually only on the top, but let's get into it. On the bass bottom, I use Toneforge Hellraiser. This plugin can do that Sansamp and peg thing, but the most important feature is there's a little button called Enhance Subs if you look right at it. There's also something you can do to enhance my subs. Hit that subscribe button, tap the notification, and give this video a like because that transition was pretty crazy. Like, how have I not done that one yet? The other reason I used Hellraiser is I like the way the limiter on the end of the chain sounds for low end. The enhanced sub reminds me of max bass and gives it creamy lows, and there's an EQ I can use to cut everything above my crossover. With all those things included, it makes it a pretty easy go-to. Let's listen. So sound of the bass DI without the amp on, and then we'll engage it. And now we're going to add the limiter at the end as well as the crossover and it will only affect what is under 
this frequency, which is why I have the bank A soloed here. Let's listen to what that's doing in a second. And that is my low end track. So I'll let you know, Hellraiser didn't really work for the top when I tried, so I decided to use Toneforge Jason Richardson for this. So in case anyone's following along, they don't need a million plugins due to the fact we'll obviously be using this later for guitar. And since we're using a guitar sim, might as well use a limiter aimed at guitars as well while we're at it. Taylor has said he's selective about limiting, but this is one of those times I think it's called for. So for the grit track, I didn't really do too much to the bass amp. Uh, I took all the lows out because don't really need those, right? It's not what we're here for on the top end. And I switched to the 421 cap here because I love how bass sounds through here. Let's take a listen to this though. I'll turn it off and then go into it. And see how it does that Sansam thing I was talking about? And a lot of that is also happening here in the mid range. I'm boosting some 8K. and cutting the low mid and the bass basically all the way off because we don't need that information. And let's listen to it with the low end. Seems like we're halfway there. Now let's get to number three, rhythm guitars. I want to say something not a lot of you know. If you got Toneforge Jason Richardson and ever wondered why it doesn't sound out of the box like some of our other amp sims, well, that's not what it was intended for. It was made to come directly off the cab with tons of low end information like Taylor Larson tracks Jason. The reasoning is it's easier to add digital high end than low end. Let me crack the code for you. All right, let's take a listen to this riff with the guitar on default, okay? Seems pretty muddy, right? Not enough presence or defined thickness, but let me make this rhythm tone slap in about 30 seconds. Pretty big difference from where we started. But now we're going to attack number four, lead guitars. Let's start with the intro lead. There's always different effects going on in Jason's solo work, and this knockoff track is no different. We're going to go back to Toneforge Jason Richardson again, but this time we're going to use the lo-fi effect pedal. By using this pedal on a lead and automating the range parameter, you can build up into the initial hit of a song. There's some really cool orchestral stuff going under this, but I'll show you in a little bit. Let's focus on the meat and potatoes for now. For the lo-fi intro, I left it default and I just turned on the lo-fi pedal and uh, boosted some AK. And then if you adjust the range on that pedal, you know, it ramps up with the automation, so let's listen. The next thing we need to worry about is the other leads of the song. Instead of switching out amps, I'm going to just switch around the built-in impulses until we find something that stands out or blends in just enough. We have to remember, there are a ton of elements that are going on and going to be fighting for space, so these impulses are essentially just giving us options of the right EQ curve. Now let's just find one that works. So for the lead, I'm using the lead channel. Skybox, uh, got the mix on about 30, going into blood, and yeah, let's mess around with this. <laughs> And that's just the one that I prefer for this.
So there you have it. The basic core concepts of mixing something in the vein of Jason Richardson. As promised, the session is in the description below, and I feel as though we've achieved what we're after. Is there anything that you guys think I missed? Is there another artist you'd like to see in the future? Please let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys in the comments as always. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time, and tap that bell for notifications so when a video drops, you know the location. Till next time, I am out of here. Mic drop, <laughs> except as engineers as we know, I'd never really drop this thing, because that'd get really expensive, even if it is a piece of sure. You know, luckily, I always drop that same one, but that was a pretty hard fall, and I'm probably not going to be using that anytime soon. I'll catch you guys later.